Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on expressive therapies and fibromyalgia, art, processing, and healing. I'm Nicole with Swing Care, and I'm excited to welcome Georgia M. Reich and Dr. Diane Shume today to just share more on this topic and to better understand the role that expressive arts can play in fibromyalgia care. I just wanted to share a little bit more about our guest before we jump in. So um, Georgia is a trauma healing educator and artist whose mission is providing support for physical, mental, and spiritual well-being through expressive arts therapies. She is guided by her own journey of healing from fibromyalgia and PTSD as a space for learning and growth. She also has a degree in social work and her experience spans work as a holistic coach, Reiki practitioner, and community facilitator. Dr. Diane Chume is a clinical psychologist with over 20 years of experience supporting patients with pain and chronic illness, including fibromyalgia. She uses approaches taken from cognitive behavioral therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, and mindfulness. Dr. Chume has specialty training as a clinical health and pain psychologist, and she's a part of our swing care provider team here. So thank you both for being here. Really excited to have this conversation. And Georgia, I just wanted to start with your own fibro journey, and I was wondering if you could share a little bit about your story and how you kind of put together your healing plan, and um, also, obviously, the role that expressive arts played in that. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Nicole and Diane, for inviting me to be here today. I'm so excited to be connecting with you guys, and the work that you're doing is so important, especially your holistic approach, which, um, of course, resonates with my my own journey. So in brief, you know, it's hard to, to summarize 22 years of a journey. And that's what I call my fibromyalgia experience as a journey, um, which started about 22 years ago. Um, in all honesty, the first few years, I just really practiced being in denial <laughs> because I they didn't know anything about fibromyalgia. Everybody, you know, at that point, it was truly sort of in your head kind of illness. And I just couldn't face the fact that I was moving into this process, which I thought was going to be over quickly. And that of course led into several decades of dealing with uh, that challenge. And I will say, you know, there are many different phases of my journey. Um, and it's always interesting when, in, when you're at the other end of a journey to look back you know, it's it, you have a different perspective than when you're in the midst of it. But um, I went through about five years when it was really bad and I literally was in bed for most of that time. So, you know, for me to kind of have started that process and then be at this end, it's just something I feel like I want to share with other people about some of the things I learned. And of course, creative arts was a part of that process. Um, how I got there is, is a combination of synchronicity and life just handing me things that I took advantage of. But how I got there was a paintbrush, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. Somebody gave me paints. And it, it was just my way of grappling with something that I couldn't put words to. So in addition to already having been a poet, when art came into my life and then I wrote a play, it all kind of just came, this became this, I, I would call it a healing balm. Mm -hmm. And we all need a healing balm when we're in pain every day, 24 hours a day. So that really was my start. I didn't think of it as therapy. I just needed comfort and I needed comfort with myself and that's how I found it. So that's a little bit of the journey. Um, and of course it includes poetry and music and, and I was dancing for a while. I hope to get back to dancing, but it's just all creative expression as a whole. Thank you. And yeah, I really appreciate what you were saying about not being able to put words to that experience because we hear that from so many of our patients, you know, it's very isolating to be in an experience kind of trapped in a, an experience that you can't really put words to or describe and no one else understands. So being able not only to use those arts to make sense of it or put an expression to it, 
uh, yourself, you know, might also translate to someone else who doesn't understand as well. So I, that makes uh, a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to express agony. And I, I think it's important to talk about pain, you know, that, that it is agony to be in pain. So to let it have a voice without destroying you, you know, it's almost like this way that you fight against it. You know, it's, it's like, I'm somehow, some way I'm going to, you know, picture you and then I can have some control over you. So beyond feelings, it's just trying to get it out, um, you know, and just being able to feel like you're in some place of control and that, that expressive, you know, practice, it really gives power in some unique way. I know Diane knows more about this than I do on the psychological level, but there's an empowerment mechanism that happens when you give voice to something. Mm 